I didn't introduce myself as Donna Starr, and I am the president of United for National Health Care because this is something that we, we see ourselves as an educational group, and that's why we're doing this today. And um, our, the, the WIST is actually a way to find a dedicated way within the state to give services to all citizens of the state of Washington and to all residents, creating a public trust that that we can all use with assurance that we're covered. And that's not happening right now. So our next speaker is going to be Chris and her awesome job of what she has to do in the legislature. Huh. Thanks, Donna. I do have an awesome job. It's a little difficult right now, but it is an awesome job. So thank you for inviting me on this wonderful day on a Saturday. I think this is the third or fourth time I've been here to speak to you guys. So thank you for keeping me on the list. And I think we set the precedent that we're going to stand up. So I, um, this, I'm in my fifth year in the legislature. I serve. I serve the 40th district, which is San Juan County, so all the islands, Anacortes through Skagit, Mount Vernon, Burlington, and then up through um, what I like to think is the best part of Bellingham. So, but I think it's all good. Um, always happy to be up here. So I want to talk a little bit about the political landscape and the legislature. And um, I was speaking to Marshall and some and Charles beforehand, and you guys are going to think I got up on the wrong side of the bed. Because what I have to say is not what you're going to want to hear. The possibilities for us passing anything progressive in our current legislature when we have a 35% voter turnout is zero. So that's the grim reality in our state. Um, we have a Senate that is Republican controlled. Our moderates are gone. Um, they are no longer getting elected within their own party, similar to what we're seeing at the national level. Um, they believe a lot of this is a socialist plot, the things that, the values that I hold dear, and that is that we take care of our brothers and sisters that have less than us, we take care of our environment, we take care of our children, and to do those things we have to pay for them. And that's part of the problem. Um, they don't want to pay for it. So um, the House side, we have 98 members of the House of Representatives, so we need 50 people to pass any, anything. We're at 50. On Tuesday night, we lost another um, Democratic seat in the House of Representatives. So right now, the Washington State Legislature is exactly evenly divided between Democrats and Republicans. And that makes it very hard for Governor Inslee to move forward with anything, and it makes it nearly impossible for us to do that. And that's extremely, extremely frustrating for all of us. So when we see these great plans that are going to um, probably you know, cost less money than what people have to pay now, the problem is, is we've set up a system on our state, and what you're seeing is the, the divide between the haves and the have-nots. And then in the political process, um, the haves can pay for public policy, either at the ballot or um, through initiatives. And to me, that's really, really discouraging. So I like the good fight. Um, the, the boys in, in Olympia um, do not scare me one single solitary bit. I grew up with all brothers, and my mom had all brothers, so, you know, bring it on, because <laughs> this is important to me. And how can I represent people? How can I work for people? Just common sense stuff is so difficult right now. So I guess what my message is, until we can bring people out to vote, we are going to lose on these important issues. And, you know, if you look around the room, you know, I, I like to think everyone in this room voted, but in the general population, if you look to your left and to your right, those folks didn't vote. So um, we're going to have very, very conservative, reduced size government, you know, we're all socialists, communists, whatever it is, because we have the desire to take care of people and to leave the world in a better place than what we found it. And I, we're struggling with that. So what I see happening this legislative session is going to be very difficult. Um, 
Danny Westneat with the Seattle Times wrote an article, I think in May, and it bothered me so much, it just made me angry, but when we rolled out our budget this year in the state legislature, we do you know, budgets in the first year of every biennium, what he said was, we now have a red budget in a blue state because we're not turning out to vote and we're electing very conservative people. In the redistricting after the census, you know, we do that every 10 years, we probably did not come out ahead. Our swing districts, we have lost because we're not motivating people, we're not getting people out to vote to elect you know, I don't know if I want to say just Democrats, but we don't elect people that are going to represent our values. So, anyway, I am happy to um, sponsor this, and I am happy to continue having the conversation. I'm happy to be out here today to see what's important to people. I like when I get emails. Many of you, Belle is famous for emailing me, so thank you. Um, I like to get that. But what you need to do is out in your communities is not just find 10 people and talk to them about this. When your elected officials are out in public speaking, you need to be there. You need to be there representing your values. Don't give any of us a free pass on whatever word it is we're going to say. You get out there and you question, how are you going to build a better society for us? and um, question every single person that you see out in public and make sure that they represent your values. Have a voice. We're not having a voice when only 35% of us are talking. So that's it for me.